wanted to say about uh, prenatal mental health is that it's a, a spectrum. <laughs> so that we have on one end of the spectrum, a thrill and excitement and anticipation of ex, you know, expecting our baby and what life is gonna be like on the other side when the baby comes out. And on the other end of that spectrum is a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry about how that is all gonna look and how uh, the experience of birth may be and what it will be like after the baby comes, how will we cope? So all that is normal. Everything on that spectrum is normal. And we all feel happier though, when we're in that thrilled, excited anticipation mode. So I just wanna talk about some ways that we can reduce uh, anxiety. And I'd say one of the greatest ways to do that, I often say that the antidote of anxiety is confidence. So whatever we can do to increase our confidence is gonna lower our anxiety. And when it comes to that post uh, prenatal period, um, some of the ways that we can do that are to inform ourselves and to educate ourselves. So that may be attending prenatal classes. Knowing what to expect on that day is going to help make you feel better about things. Knowing how you're going to cope, you know, what are the skills that you're going to develop and learn? Uh, how are you going to support your partner? Those are all the kinds of things that come up in those uh, childbirth classes. Attending a breastfeeding class, you know, just to learn a little bit more about breastfeeding. If you haven't seen your family members breastfeeding, um, that's a really wonderful way to learn more. Oh, I apologize. I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, the other things, the other types of classes that you can attend are infant care classes. So again, that's something to make you feel a little bit more confident about how you're gonna handle things once baby comes along. Um, Something that I like to share with parents a lot is when you're gathering information, especially you know, well-meaning family and friends, always just when they wanna share a story, just say a time out and say, is this a positive story? Is this a good ending? Is this a happy story? Because that's what you wanna fill your brain and your basket with right now. So if it's not, <laughs> don't, don't ask to be, have it shared. So look for positive information. Uh, so another way to increase confidence is with support and preparation. Um, some of the important ways to uh, prepare for birth is to find, out, uh, to find out what your best support system will be for the actual experience of birth. So doulas are a, you know, a super well-trained professional for that skill. Um, dads or partners can learn uh, through prenatal education, those skills as well. You know, a well um, confident and calm family member or friend can be a wonderful support as well. So this is what you need to think about as, you know, who will make you feel most confident and comfortable on the day that you have your baby. Um, for the postpartum period, it's really important in this prenatal time also to make some preparations for that. So it's, you know, the pre, the Postpartum time, those first four to six weeks, it's so important for you and your baby to bond. So all the other things in life, like who's going to cook, who's going to clean, get groceries, do laundry, um, who will do all those chores? Um, so it's important to think about it, think ahead, you know, what can you do to make that time less stressful? Um, enlisting family and friends is very helpful. The support of a doula is invaluable. You know, doing things, preparing meals for yourself ahead of time can also just bring down your anxiety level. So think about how you can prepare, how you can set up those support systems for you before you get into that uh, area of postpartum. And the last thing I just wanna talk about is feeling good. So, it increases our confidence when we can take care of ourselves. You know, we feel healthier um, when we have gotten enough sleep, which we're going to hear about later, when we're eating well, um, when we're taking care of ourselves. And so that may mean if you're having aches and pains during this prenatal time, it's self-care. Perhaps you need to uh, contact a chiropractor, a physio, 
a massage therapist to just work through some of those discomforts because when you're not feeling well physically, it's, it's hard to feel well mentally. Certainly we know exercise is helpful and uh, getting outdoors, we're told is fabulous for our mental health. So I hope that's been helpful, a little bit of information and I will pass it on to the next doula. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Heidi. Um, it's really important how we feel in our pregnancy and the support that we, we receive and how we feel. Um, it's so important. So thank you so much. Now we're going to hear from our sleep consultant, uh, Petra, who loves to give the gifts of sleep. Um, I think that is definitely an amazing gift for sure especially to a new family, loves chocolate. Um, we know that uh, it's chocolate without nuts though, because then it just takes up space where there could be more chocolate. <laughs> and wherever you go, go with all your heart, Confucius. And I've heard one that says, wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> I don't know who said that, but somebody did. Very, very smart person. <laughs> I think Christy said that. <laughs> no, no, I can't take credit. Somebody, okay. somebody else. I'll look it up. But uh, tell us, tell us about sleep. Is it even possible during pregnancy and after baby? Mm, it is possible. We just need to work on it a, a bit. It doesn't come as easy as uh, it comes when we're not pregnant. So I have a few tips. So um, I'm Petra and I'm a sleep consultant and I work uh, mostly with newborns and babies and uh, toddlers, but I also like to make sure that uh, pregnant people are getting the best sleep that they get. So I do have a few tips because we do know that uh, research has shown, shows that a lack of sleep can trigger mental health issues, challenges. So it's really important that uh, you get the best sleep that you can get during your pregnancy and uh, early, well, postpartum also, not early postpartum, but during your whole postpartum period. But let's start with uh, sleep during pregnancy. So why is it important to uh, get the best sleep you can get during your pregnancy? Uh, good sleep and being well rested can lead to a labor and delivery that can be shorter and with less intervention. So I'm not going to guarantee that, but when somebody is uh, well rested, the results are often, often better. So that's really important. It also can lead to into recovering from giving birth, being smooth and your trans transition into your postpartum recovery can be easier. And um, I just want to make sure that having good sleep during your pregnancy, again, I just want to make, make sure that you understand it doesn't guarantee that everything will be easy, uh, but it, can, it, just, it just helps. Like being well rested and uh, having good sleep. And as Heidi already said, it helps with your anxiety level. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good thing to have good sleep during your pregnancy. So now you're going to ask me, okay, I am very pregnant and now I want to sleep better. So tell me how we can do that. So there are a few tips. Uh, and it's, it really is, a, it is also a little bit personal. So you have to do the things that work really well for you. If you already know how you can get the best sleep during your pregnancy, that's great and build on that. So one of the things that you wanna do is you keep your uh, room, your bedroom uh, cool, you keep it dark and you limit your bed, you limit the bed for sleeping and sexual activity. So that it's not like you're hanging out in your bedroom the whole day or the whole evening. And then by the time you finally fall, uh, are ready to go to sleep, you're sort of like tired of being in that room. It's better to go spend your evening hours before you go to sleep in a different room so that your bedroom is fresh and your sheets are, are feeling great so that uh, can help you uh, fall asleep better. So you prioritize sleep and you stick to a consistent bedtime. Like if you are uh, prone to take naps, if you need, need to nap during the day, there's nothing wrong with that, but try to do it earlier in the day so it doesn't interfere with your nighttime sleep. You need to build up enough pressure to sleep 
uh, to fall asleep and stay asleep at night. So any naps late, late morning, early afternoon. Make your bed as comfortable as possible. Add some uh, support cushions, invest in good quality sheets and pillows that are really comfortable for you. So read a book or take a bath or indulge in another calming activity in preparation for bedtime. And use a nightlight to make it easier if you need to use the bathroom. And often in your pregnancy, you will wake up to use the bathroom. So um, if, it's, if you have to turn on uh, bright lights, that can really uh, interfere with, uh, with your sleep. So keep it as dark as possible. One thing you can do is you can change your light bulbs with red light bulbs. Uh, their wavelength produce the, uh, stimulate the production of melatonin. And that's also really good for your postpartum recovery. So if you are planning on do th doing that, do it in your pregnancy, do it during your pregnancy. So you already have the benefits from that. So then uh, avoid caffeine, like spicy foods and heavy meals too close to bedtime to reduce the, the risk of uh, GERD. Uh, heartburn and choose food that is high in vitamins and minerals that aid in promoting sleep like dairy products, uh, uh, poultry like chicken or turkey, nuts and seeds, bananas are really good, avocados and tart cherries, or have a, have a drink like uh, warm milk, almond milk, passion fruit tea, chamomile tea, they all help uh, get those uh, sleepy vibes going. Avoid taking your technology into the bedroom and turn off the screens at least an hour before bed. And I know that is a really hard thing for most of us to do. And even having your phone beside you is something that we would say, try to avoid it. If you need it in your room, have it further away from your bedroom so that it's not when you wake up really close by. And when you when you feel that you cannot go back to sleep quickly, you're not tempted to pick up your phone and check what, uh, what happened with your friends when they were having a late night dinner. So try to avoid that. Um, if you are uh, not able to, to sleep, get out of bed and go do something else until you feel sleepy again. So maybe fold the laundry, like try to do something that is no fun at all. That not something that is really entertaining you because then you get activated again and you want to keep going. The other thing that you can do at night uh, is write down your thoughts in your journal or uh, just anything that is occupying you and why you cannot sleep is a uh, really write it down and then get back to it in the morning. If you have written it down, it's often off your mind. One thing that uh, I personally like to do if I cannot sleep is I'm going to uh, countdown by threes. So because that means that your brain has to think a about something different than uh, about the fact that you cannot sleep. So count down by threes. And uh, I usually start by 100. So 97, 94. And if that is not enough, then start by 1000. So I find it is for me, it's really helpful. So that's a, that's a little tip that you can even try tonight. So when you have good sleep habits uh, set during your pregnancy, it can also help your baby start off with good sleep habits because your baby is then used to your sleep habits, your sleep pattern. And again, I'm not gonna, gonna going to guarantee you here that you're going to have a baby that uh, sleeps like a dream baby because that's not something that we can, uh, we can guarantee. But it, it, these are all little helpers that can, uh, can help you uh, to get your baby off uh, starting correct so let's see uh, let's see if that works so now we talk a little bit about sleep after your baby is born and the importance of it um, giving birth is going to take a lot of energy from you and you're and if you're being well rested it can also help you uh, recovering quickly uh, after you uh, after you've given birth so if you're exhausted and you're gonna go into your labor and delivery already tired, then uh, that can, uh, can, can be hard for you to, to recover from it because you're already so tired. The other thing is what happens is that your sleep patterns will most likely change after your baby is born and newborns, because newborns need to feed every two and a half to three hours. So being well rested is a really good idea. It's uh, one of the best gifts that you can give yourself during pregnancy. 
And when you're giving birth, is there's a shift in your ho- hormones, and that can uh, be a trigger for mental health. And then if you are uh, lacking sleep, if you're tired, then sometimes it can all become too much, and then uh, it's it's really hard to to recover from it. So try to avoid these things as much as possible. Um, it is important that you uh, do look after. You. that you that you do uh, get the best sleep that you can get. So if you have a great working sleep routine already in place during your pregnancy, then postpartum, you ease back into it as much as you can. And your body is also, your body and your brain is also used to that routine. So following through with that routine is not as tricky. If you have not have uh, been able to set up a routine during your pregnancy, then postpartum when things are all of a sudden very different and you have this baby to look after and how are you going to do that? And then you need to set up a, a routine. It's, it's a lot harder. If you have a little routine for yourself, just follow it through and it will uh, be a little bit easier for you. Uh, if you have not been able to do it uh, during your pregnancy, then try to set up follow the suggestions that we uh, that I've just given you for pregnancy sleep you can use that in um, postpartum sleep also so the first few days after you have given birth you're probably going to feel really good and you might even be wondering why you are not feeling so tired as you think you would be and this is really your adrenaline at work so and then all of a sudden usually uh, day three four five it comes down and and you're really going to feel tired and you might feel a little bit of the baby blues. And the baby blues are not like a postpartum depression. So usually most parents uh, get out of the baby blues after a few days and then they have had a few good hours of sleep. And um, I also want to mention that not only the birth parent is, uh, uh, how do I say that? It can have the baby blues or postpartum depression. This can also happen to the supporting partner. So don't be surprised if uh, if you're not given, if you're not the person who gave birth, but you're still feeling a little bit down, that can really happen. And it's also very important that you take care of your own sleep too. And uh, one thing that I always suggest to new parents uh, is that you tag team. So one parent takes the baby for a few hours and then the other parent goes to sleep. And then later on in the night, uh, the first parent goes to sleep and the other parent stays up with, uh, with, uh, with the baby. If, or you don't really need to stay up with the baby if the baby sleeps, but you look after the baby. So another um, one thing that I always suggest is use your visitors very wisely and accept help because sleep is really the best gift that you can give yourself. And if you have people that are willing to help you and that you trust and that you feel comfortable with, let them help you. They would probably love to hold your baby or they would love to help you out cooking you a meal while you are holding your baby or when you are taking a nap. So that's all for me. And if there's any questions later on, I am happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Petra. And uh, again, a reminder to everyone, any questions that you have, please put them in the chat so we don't forget. Um, We all have baby brain, even if we don't have babies, we (laughs) all forget things. So make sure that you're putting your your questions in there so we, we don't miss them. So last but certainly not least, we have our postpartum doula, Sharon. Um, she, her support comes from the heart and babies and parents feel that when we get this feedback from clients all the time. She becomes Nana doula to every family that she works with. She also has a favorite food, which is cookies. And she would eat them all the time if she could, even for breakfast. And I think she's even been caught eating (laughs) 
cookies for breakfast in the past. <laughs> so you're going to share with us postpartum mental health. So take it away. All right. I don't know if my speaker is on. It is. Okay, great. Okay, well, hi everybody. I am Sharon, as Christy introduced, and um, I absolutely love being a postpartum doula. Um, nothing gives me better pleasure than um, starting a shift at the at, at the end of the night for the family and seeing that uh, you know exhausted, exasperated family sometimes, and see me roll in and just know that um, they're going to get some rest and they're going to get some support and come morning when I leave, they're like new people. So uh, between the parents and the baby, um, those are things that just give me so much pleasure just seeing um, how I am able to support them. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk to you about postpartum mental health. And um, I think it's super important because I think it is something that um, people don't always um, expect. And, um, you know, as a as a parent to be, you expect everything to be uh, joy and pleasure and euphoria, uh, getting so excited knowing that your your new little family members coming along soon. Um, but some parents do experience um, extreme negative emotions uh, during this time as well, and some of them do suffer in silence, which is really a shame. It's totally not needed. And along, as long as you're aware of these things and some of the reasons, I think it makes it a whole lot easier for you to work through these and have your um, systems in place like uh, the other ladies have, have already mentioned a lot of the things that will help you um, deal with these things. But knowing, expecting it, it's natural, it's normal. You're not the only one that ever has some of these feelings. And that's the important thing is just um, knowing knowing that it could, it could happen to you. Uh, so the first thing uh, the ladies have already mentioned is that you have a huge hormone change um, during your, your birth. Um, as soon as the baby's born, your, um, your hormone estrogen and progesterone uh, change, uh, they drop. Uh, oxytocin um, also has peaked during the, the labor, it starts to decrease. Prolactin for your milk supply can start and cortisol may creep in there and that can cause, um, it is usually caused by fear and anxiety. Um, even sometimes the most prepared uh, parents will have some anxiety during the birth. Um, and unfortunately, there are some people who will um, even experience some trauma during their delivery. Um, so it's important to know that some of these things can happen and uh, like Petra said, and, uh, and like Heidi said, if you're prepared for these things, um, you can deal with them a whole lot easier than all of a sudden this happens to you. And uh, for the birth parent, your body's going through a huge transition now. It's learning how to um, be the caregiver for the baby outside of the womb. And it is really um, a learning experience for both you and baby. So just be uh, kind to yourself and patient. Um, now, Petra mentioned that the main thing that I think is, I see so many times is the biggest problem, and that is exhaustion. And I don't think that people are ready for how exhausting it is. Um, first of all, like Petra said, before the baby comes, um, for weeks before, you may not be sleeping well because you're uncomfortable. Um, you could start Braxton Hicks contractions early weeks early, and that can wake you up and interrupt your sleep. Um, you know, near the end of your pregnancy, um, you know, you do start before you go in the hospital for maybe a couple of days, you could be in labor. Um, not necessarily, um, you know, full-fledged labor, but enough to disrupt your sleep. And if you know that this is going to happen, things are just a whole lot easier. Um, your delivery can take quite a, quite a while. So there again, you're up and you're awake. Um, after the baby's born, you've actually exerted the same amount of calories as you would have if you ran a marathon. And you have to give yourself a break and some time to adjust to these things. Um, another problem sometimes is that we have a birth plan and we have things that we think are gonna go a certain way. And then 
we have to be a little bit prepared for if things change and you say you have a, a C-section that wasn't planned, that can cause stress. And that also is going to affect your mental health. And so all these things are um, contributors to things that can really uh, play on your, on your mental health, even the strongest and uh, you know, most resilient person can get pulled down into at this time. And so the main thing is just um, to know, like Petra said, that you're gonna have months of this little person who needs your attention and affection every two to three hours for the next few months. So that also um, is very exhausting. And a lot of my moms say that they find their, their most down time of the day is their nighttime feedings when the house is quiet and it's dark and they're alone and they just feel so isolated. So being prepared for that, um, just know that this could creep in and, and just try and um, plan for this time and, and plan for some ways that you can maybe help yourself through this. Um, just know that, um, you know, work, work and uh, social pressures they're also huge um, destructive things that, you know, everybody thinks that uh, it's easy peasy. Well, it's not for everybody and it's easy peasy for the few and for a lot of people, they, they suffer in silence and they don't need to because it's not normal. Uh, so in our culture, we expect everybody to be super mom. You know, that's the problem we, um, we compare to things on social media. Um, everybody's got that one friend or family member who like whipped through their pregnancy, their birth, they popped the kid out and they were like, you know, at the gym and having coffee with their friends three days later. That's not realistic. And that's, that's really not helpful when people tell you things like that. That's not reality. So just, um, <laughs> you know, kind of, screen what what you're told and like petra said if people want to tell you stories make sure that they are the positive stories and get as much encouragement as you can um we're not a village anymore uh, unfortunately a lot of people are alone and that's the, that's a sad reality in this country that there's a lot of people who have nobody and this covid has been um, just such an eye opener to how alone so many families are. And so um, we have to help each other. And, you know, you have to give yourself some time and not expect yourself to be perfect parents when nobody's there to coach or train you. Like if you're going to learn to ride a bike, somebody doesn't throw you a bike and say, there you go. Like, you know, go, go ride that you expect someone to show you and help you and be kind with you. And that's how we learn and that's how we prosper. Um, so I have some suggestions that may help um, during this time to uh, help you get over some of this um, mental health time. Um, Petra is my superstar because she hit the nail on the head as far as I'm concerned. And that is to rest, rest, rest. And sleep to me is the magic formula. Um, you have to you have to rest and you have to give yourself time to recover you have to sleep as much as you can and i always encourage my moms to sleep when the baby sleeps for the first couple of weeks stay in your pajamas sleep in the baby sleeps give yourself time uh, to recover um the other thing too is that you should know that there's lots of people you can talk to um, if you are feeling down and you've got your healthcare provider. There's tons of trusted advocates out there to help you uh, work through your negative uh, feelings and symptoms. Um, you've got doulas there to talk with you, and um, you know, just talk it out. Don't don't keep these feelings to yourself. That's when things fester and get worse. By bringing it to the forefront and talking to your partner, to your family, to your doula, to your healthcare provider, it can make a world of difference because there really are things that everybody can do to help you at this time. Um, really just being aware of this. Awareness, um, one of the ladies already mentioned is when you're aware of things, you're prepared for things. And that's the biggest thing is like, people don't always talk about, oh my God, the first few weeks were so hard for me. 
if you are prepared for that and you think it could happen and you have your little, um, you know, bag of tricks for things to help you out, then it's going to be so much easier when maybe one of those two things do happen to you. Um, Petrus mentioned this too, and I will tell you to take as much help as you can during your postpartum time. Um, having family or friends drop by with meals is like gold. Just they don't have to come in, they can just drop off meals. Um, I had a niece one time who had a food shower. What a great idea if you've had more than one baby, have a food shower and have all your guests um, make you a couple of meals and freeze them. You know, the days that you're just feeling like you've been dragged through a pothole backwards and you can just pop a really yummy meal in the oven is, is just like so um, encouraging. So little things like that, um, have people help you. Um, when your family asks what they can do, let them help you. Let them do things like right now they can do shopping, they can do laundry, they can walk your dog, after COVID, they can come by, like Petra said, let them take care of the baby a little bit. Let them help you. People are there because they care. And if they ask, it's because they really want to help. And these little things can go a long way. I had one uh, family, the mom was the biggest stress in her life was that nobody was taking the dog for a walk. If that's your big thing, let your doula help you, let your partner do it, let your neighbor do it. Like, Different people, different things play on their mind. And so have, have these little things that can help you. And that, that could be something that will help. Um, taking good care of yourself. This is always my big thing is self-care. And this is the time that the birth parent really needs to take care of themselves. Um, I'm dealing with some people that are not taking their pain meds as prescribed by their doctor. And you really have to stay on top of your meds as prescribed by your doctor because you don't want to get into this wicked pain cycle that is out of control. And the doctor's not going to give you medication that's going to be harmful to your baby. So please, please, please stick to a schedule, take your medications on time, give yourself time um, to uh, recover. Um, Another big thing is uh, nutrition. Um, it's really hard to want to eat sometimes when you're so exhausted and you've got like five minutes before you're gonna feed the baby again and you wanna pee and you've got these other things to do. So having like lots of great little um, nutritious little snacks um, that will help keep you boosted, keep you hydrated, um, all these little things. Um, just some pampering things like a long hot shower you could have three showers in a day. You don't have to use the shower just for getting clean. That can be your little quiet time, your quality time. It's like a little mini massage um, on your on your neck, your back, and that can really help. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one. I've had a few moms that say the same thing. Clean sheets are like magic. Like to get in a bed with clean sheets, it's like, oh my God, that feels so good. Um, on a nice sunny day, getting some sun. So even if you're not strong enough to go for a walk, sitting on your porch, sitting on your balcony, just sitting near the sun, looking out at, at sunshine is so helpful. Um, little pleasures, little pleasures go a long way. Um, skin to skin with baby, this is a big one. Um, I call I call my babies my little drug dealers because I get my oxytocin from snuggling them too. Babies, um, they are like magic. They're just the best thing to boost you up. There's nothing magical more magical than snuggling a baby right there in your neck and they just feel so yummy. Moms, use that time skin to skin. This bonding be, for both of you is so good. Like just use this time together, love on each other. They're, they're gonna, you're gonna turn around and they're gonna be riding their bike down the street before you know it. So while you have this time, just snuggle them, just love them, spend this time together. Um, another big thing is trying to keep a bond with your entire family. Your support partner, like Petra said, sometimes even feels 
the same um, anguish and, and sometimes the, the mental stresses that you do. So it's really important to use this time to bond as a family and spend time together, um, cuddles if you can, include them in different things, and also to be aware that they can be feeling some of the same um, struggles that you're feeling, uh, especially they don't like when they see that um, they're not in control. <laughs> Just saying, <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of uh, partners like to be in control and now they're not and they find it really hard to deal with. So just um, to know that. And last but not least, Petra uh, mentioned this and this is always one of my big bugaboos when I go to the families is um, getting rid of your electronic devices in your room. Take it out of your room, keep it away from baby, uh, in another room, check it once a day at your convenience, return messages, return calls. Um, it is such a detrimental distraction. I see moms who are breastfeeding with their phone in their hand and it breaks my heart because that's not what you're supposed to be doing right now. Right now is your time to love your baby and spend this good time together. You can check your Facebook or I don't know what those other things are that <laughs> that people do <laughs> girls are laughing because they know I don't know um, but you don't need to do this right now okay spend your time enjoying your baby and please please just remember you've got lots of help you've got postpartum doulas like me who just love to come and spend time with you um, you've got your partner who would love to help you you really have to speak up and you know this is going to be the best time of your life if you let it be Okay, thanks everybody. Wow, that was, there was a lot of tidbits in there. Um, first, Sorry. the bike. I loved the bike thing and how we don't expect people to just know how to ride a bike and, and how we expect people to just know how to parent. Um, but what really got me was the um, the drug the baby drug dealers. That's going to go down in history. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope everyone enjoyed um, our presentations tonight. Um, if there's any questions, we didn't get any in the chat box. Um, if there's any that uh, people want to unmute themselves and ask, um, please feel free to do so. If, um, if we don't have anyone come in or while we wait for someone to be brave and unmute, um, how the breakout rooms is going to work is I have, um, I've teamed everybody up with someone on our team um, and you're going to have five minutes with that person. I'm going to send a message into the, um, into the group chat um, when five minutes is up and doulas, you're going to have head back into the main room um, and everyone else is going to stay in the breakout room. We're going to rotate through as many people as we can. If you, you've got to go, um, we are so happy that you were able to come. And, um, and if this doesn't work out, please forgive me. Uh, so no questions so far. Um, the other request that I have is if you are in a breakout room, if you don't mind, um, turning on your camera um, because it is difficult to have a conversation with people who are who are not there. So again, we don't care if you are in your pajamas. We're just happy to um, happy to chat with you. So no questions came through. So I am going to send you um, into your rooms. And if um, there's no one in your room, you can just come back here. Um, 